Hi folks, I'm Dr. Ed Byer of Byer Natural Health Solutions. Today, we're gonna to talk about something that a lot of people have. It's the number one autoimmune condition in the United States, and that's Hashimoto's thyroiditis. We're gonna talk about how to put it in remission using functional medicine. And we're also gonna talk about the top 15 triggers. I'll try not to bore you to death, but it's important that you understand that there are certain triggers to this that when you remove them, you can put it in remission and traditional medicine doesn't look at this at all. So if you're frustrated with your doctor is looking at your TSH and T4 and just adjusting your levothyroxine, your Synthroid or whatever you're on, sit back, relax and listen to this because it's gonna be a lot of information. So uh, functional medicine, what we do is we wanna identify through proper lab testing and remove the underlying triggers to Hashimoto's disease. So don't expect your endocrinologist or your doctor to know, understand, or even accept this that you're gonna learn in this video. They see things from a very different perspective. So what is Hashimoto's disease? Your immune system is, is mistakenly attacking either a enzyme in your thyroid called TPO or the main protein backbone of, uh, of that makes thyroid hormone called TB, TGB. So when you attack, when the immune system attacks something, they form these proteins called antibodies. So TPO antibodies and TGB antibodies, when we see these on the blood work, it's the definitive diagnosis for Hashimoto's. Now, a few facts that I wanna share with you quickly about Hashimoto's before we dive in to what actually triggers it. It's the most common underactive thyroid problem in the United States, severely underdiagnosed. I've had hundreds of women, mostly, come to me and they didn't even know they had it. Uh, traditional medicine does not address the underlying triggers to autoimmunity. It's most common in females, 40 to 60, uh, eight to one female to male ratio. Babies born to women with untreated Hashimoto's have an increased chance of birth defects and brain development delays because these antibodies can cross over the placenta. There's a genetic component. We see my sister had it, my mom had it, my aunt had it. So if you know you got it, you may want to talk to them. Most people with Hashimoto's disease have other thyroid dysfunction besides the autoimmune process. In, di in, in, in uh, diagnosis class, we used to say just because a dog has ticks doesn't mean that he doesn't have fleas, right? So Hashimoto's is greatly impacts brain function too. So what happens is these antibodies fl can fluctuate too. So you can be positive one day and negative the next. But once you test positive for the antibodies, you always have Hashimoto's. There's no cure, there's only remission. So the things we're gonna talk about is how to put it in remission. You go back to those triggers, you're gonna get it again. So TSH can fluctuate wildly. It's so important for you to know that because a lot of you, that's the, that's the marker that your doctor's looking at. And if it's up and then it's down, you're like, and they're adjusting your medication and they don't even know this little fact that you know now, it's a horrible marker to track if you have Hashimoto's. Now there are other conditions associated with Hashimoto's. Over 60% of people that have uh, uh, autoantibodies to the thyroid, it attacks the area of the brain called the cerebellum. So a lot of you suffer with balance and chronic neck pain and vertigo. Uh, intrinsic factor antibodies. This is a protein that we need in our stomach to absorb B12. So, and so you don't absorb B12, you develop these, per, what's called pernicious anemia. Celiac disease, Addison's disease, um, any other, lupus is really common, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's, uh, vitiligo, poor gallbladder function, and poor um, uh, cholesterol levels are also associated with Hashimoto's. So any, these are just general facts I wanna give you about any autoimmune disease. Your white blood cells are attacking your own body. There's over 80 known autoimmune diseases. The incidence is skyrocketing. There are well-known triggers to any autoimmune disease, specifically Hashimoto's, that are well-documented in the scientific literature. So even though if your doctor doesn't know about it, the science does. Identification and removal of these triggers can put the autoimmune disease into remission. Traditional medicine doesn't look at that. What triggers an autoimmune disease in one person can greatly vary from what triggers it in another person, even though it's the same autoimmune disease. So if I have one, someone with Hashimoto's and another lady with Hashimoto's and the symptoms are the same, but what's triggering it could be totally different. So autoimmune disease uh, reactions occur 12 years before you have symptoms. Uh, on average, if you have one autoimmune disease against one body part, you're gonna eventually develop it to multiple body parts. That's why it's important to get it in remission. And there's no cure for autoimmune disease, there's only remission. 
So let's get right into it. The first trigger to autoimmune disease is your gut barrier is broken down. So we have this barrier in our small intestine. It's one cell thick and it lines the gut and it's got all the microvilli in there. And that's kind of like a screen door to, in your home that prevents bugs from getting into your, into your house. So when we eat things and we have microbes and we have germs in our gut and we have large particles of food, we don't want that getting through into the general circulation. When the gut barrier breaks down, that's called leaky gut syndrome and that is the gateway to Hashimoto's. So we can test for that and we can correct it. So like fixing the screen door. Number two, food sensitivities. There's a high correlation between gluten sensitivity and antibodies to the enzyme TPO in, in uh, thyroid. Many of you probably already know that. We do a 96 panel food sensitivity test and we're gonna identify what exactly, what foods are you eating that's triggering an immune response that is also triggering your Hashimoto's. Um, so there are many factors, uh, to, there are many things in the gluten molecule, by the way, that your doctor doesn't check for. So a lot of the gluten sensitivity testing out there is really, really bad. We look at all the different fractions to gluten and we find out for sure if the Hashimoto patient is a sensitive to gluten. Number three, unstable blood sugar, also known as dysglycemia. When your blood sugar goes too high or too low, you get these insulin surges and insulin surges trigger autoimmune and Hashimoto's. There are many players though when it comes to blood glucose folks, not just diet and exercise, thyroid function, adrenal function, liver function, pancreatic function are all triggers to, uh, are all, will all cause uh, our blood sugar to become dysregulated. So I know this is a lot of information, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm throwing it out and you're maybe getting a little overwhelmed. We have a link below that you can check and you can watch an hour long video that I've done specifically on this topic. Digestive dysfunction is another common trigger to autoimmune disease. If you have GERD or poor stomach acidity, uh, that will trigger autoimmune disease. Intestinal overgrowth will cause it, so we have to identify and fix them. Irritable bowel, uh, brain function too, will cause the gut not to work very well. If you have another autoimmune condition known as Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, celiac disease, that's gonna agitate the gut. And let me tell you, 80% of the immune system is in our gut. So, we're, you know, autoimmunity is an immune problem, so guess what we gotta fix first? The digestive tract. So number five is, um, certain infections. Now there are four specific infections that they've identified in the research that really, really, uh, really trigger Hashimoto's. Epstein-Barr, which is a virus, Yersinia, which is a common infection in the gut, Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori, and Blastocystis hamidus. The last three, Yersinia, Helicobacter pylori, Blastocystis, those are really common gut infections that we see in Hashimoto's. So we do a DNA stool test. We identify, do you have it? You don't have it. We got to remove it through natural methods. Now, number six, there are certain medications that will actually trigger Hashimoto's. Now, if you have antibodies to the protein, the TGB protein, you got to be really careful with bioidentical hormones like Armour, Naturethroid, uh, des desiccated thyroid. These are all, these are all uh, hormones that contain that protein. And if you eat it and you're, you're stoking your immune system. So we have to be very careful with that. Oral contraceptions will also tax the liver and deplete what's called methyl donors and trigger Hashimoto's. And then certain hormone replacement therapy have trace amounts of gluten in them. And if you're gluten, it's called cornstarch filler. So like Synthroid and Cytomel have cornstarch filler in it, and that is gluten. And if you have a gluten sensitivity, that's gonna trigger your Hashimoto's. Number seven, adrenal gland dysfunction. The adrenal hormone cortisol is a major, major uh, immune modulator, plus it shuts down thyroid function in a lot of other ways that I talk about in my other videos. So the, uh, we have to get cortisol under control. There's certain, number eight, certain nutritional deficiencies, vitamin A, vitamin D, essential fatty acids, and glutathione. These are all major immune modulators. If you're deficient in them, your immune system becomes dysregulated, and it's just gonna continue to form antibodies to your thyroid. So and does your endocrinologist look at this stuff? There's no way. So that's why you have, you have other options, folks. Number eight, there's certain genetic mutations that will trigger uh, Hashimoto's. One's called BCM01. That's the gene that's critical for a synthesis of vitamin A, which is important for immunity. MTHFR in, is involved in what's called the methylation process. That keeps genes, the bad genes turned off and the good genes turned on. So we check for all these. VDR is a gene involved in vitamin D 
absorption. So you, everybody knows you need vitamin D to modulate your immune system. So we have to look at these things through a cheek swab test, and there's always ways nutritionally to work around these genetic mutations. Number 10, certain supplements, folks, will trigger autoimmune disease in some people. Iodine, even though you may need iodine, if it's triggering autoimmunity, you should not be taking it. Thyroid glandulars, like pig thyroid, that may be stoking your autoimmune diseases against the antibodies. So that, uh, the, the protein that actually is the backbone of thyroid. Uh, number 11, pregnancy. There's an abrupt shift between, in, in a woman's uh, immune system when they're pregnant to right after the birth, and sometimes that'll trigger autoimmunity. I hear that all the time. Dr. Brown, I, had, I was so healthy till I had that second child, and all of a sudden, I, I, I never recovered from it. So that can trigger it. Uh, artificial sweeteners is number 12. Saccharin, which is in sweet and low. Sucralose and Splenda. Aspartame, uh, equal in NutraSweet. Those cause abnormal immune responses, and they have negative impacts on our gut flora, which is 80% of our immunity. Number 13 is smoking, whether it's you smoke or you're getting secondhand smoke. Uh, that's an adrenal stimulant, which is gonna cause abnormal cortisol response, which we talked about cortisol modulating the immune system. Smoking also, ha a smoke has uh, cadmium in it. And that's a huge destroyer to the thyroid gland. Number 14, heavy metal toxicity. Things like cadmium, we already mentioned that, arsenic, lead. Uh, we can check for all this, cobalt. Those will trigger Hashimoto's, so we have to look at that through a specific test. Number 15, last but not least, is an inflammatory diet. So we already mentioned food sensitivities. Poor fats, folks, hydrogenated oils, trans fats, soybean oil, and all these processed vegetable oils, don't eat them. They trigger autoimmunity, alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, high histamine foods, lectin foods, FODMAPs, all this stuff we have to go over in, the, in your history. Is this triggering your Hashimoto's? Now, one of the things that we see, people come to me like, my doctor's checking my thyroid and they say it's normal when I don't feel normal. Well, here's the thing. Number one, they don't run enough markers. They usually run two, we run nine, uh, nine, sometimes 10. But lab rages, folks, are based on sick people. When you go to a lab and they, and they, they draw your blood, your doctor gets the results, he's comparing you to a lab range. Well, how do they determine that range? They take the average low and the average high of that particular marker, TSH, T4, whatever. But what kind of people go to labs? Unhealthy people. So we use tighter ranges that can sleuth out underlying issues. So if you've enjoyed what you learned today, don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Also, please, please like and share this content to people that you know that may be suffering from this. I'm Dr. Ed Byer of Byer Natural Health Solutions. Have a great day.